SprintCarUnlimited.com coming to you from Bass Motor Speedway. We're here with winner Corey Eliason. Uh, Corey, that was close. Um, you know, you and you lost the lead, then you got the lead back. Looked like you were going to be in good shape. Then you had a caution with two to go. I'm sure you wanted to see that because you were on cruise control at that point. And then uh, he made a bid there in the last corner, and it was less than a car length. Uh, take us through that last lap and what you were thinking. Um, honestly, we restarted, and, you know, I, I felt I had a really good restart, a really good one and two, and, and I saw him kind of poke his nose a few times in three and four, and I was like, well, the top's probably still faster because I could keep the momentum up. Just the lap track was in front of us and kind of dictated it. It, it, it shoots a lot of dirty, you know, marbles across, makes the air dirty, and, and I needed clean air for our, our car to work really well. You know, I was, I felt I was a bit free on entry, and, and it was hard to kind of control in, in the first little bit. I was trying to feel it out and trying to move around and figure out what was going on. But um, towards the end, I, you know, I, I went in on the top and I saw, I could see the shadow coming at speed. So I just dumped it completely and, you know, turned down to try to just try to get going straight there. And, um, you know, I had to squeeze him on the front stretch and force him if he wanted it, you know, worse than I did, he was going to be willing to destroy the car. You know, I, I, I feel like I left him a lane and, and hopefully, I mean, I, I raced pretty clean and I feel like a lot of people you know respect the way I race I just it I, I didn't like what I had to do but I knew I had to you know try to control him um, doing it so when I saw him right when I saw his nose go down I was able to lift so he couldn't you know dump it and turn underneath me in one and two and um, I just got to the curb first and I sent it in three and four and I, I knew he was gonna either slide me or you know come off the top so I try to enter a little bit in the middle so I could try to dictate either way if I had to you know try to turn left and hold him down or, or slide up and, and pinch him, you know, to try to make him have to lift just that split second, you know, so I could, but um, all in all, you know, it's a, it's a good night. We, you know, back up front here at BAPS, for some reason, this track and me get along, I guess, is better than any other ones in PA right now. So um, it, it's good momentum to, uh, you know, kind of pick up and get rolling. You come to PA, I mean, obviously this is a good place for you and Jim to, to kind of get things rolling because he knows this place well he's won here last year uh it, when you when this deal happened did that kind of cross your mind going to pa this is a good place for you to kind of, guys to kind of gel um it it did you know and and i mean i'm sure brian ridge mark miller can attest to this i was not wanting to come to pa i'm like the last place we need to race is pa like we need to go run the outlaws we need to get as far away from pa as possible because we have six races in pa with our high limit schedule the other 54 are outside of PA, so we have got to get it going good. But ultimately, you know that that's me. Just you know, I, I'm looking right, you know, down. I'm not looking way ahead and trying to you know figure out. Obviously, going through the whole situation and everything that you know kind of went on the past week, you know, with us, it was you know I was like, well, this is what we're doing, and you know I was want, putting my foot down, saying you know thinking I had control, but um, ultimately this is you know our our best decision because it it gives. Uh, the, the crew chief a, a chance to see how I race hear my language of how I explain what the car and what goes on and it's easier for him to understand it probably when it's here at his home track because everybody knows he's fast around here no matter what car he's on it you know whether it's Zierfoss, Marks, Borden, Macri they, they everybody was quick the second you know he was around here so um, I just feel it, it was definitely the right call to come here because even if I was say I couldn't feel the right way or I didn't think something was right, he could kind of take it and you know twist the language around to you know to his setup and, and make it work, which ultimately I, I think he is steered way away from what you know he's normally done just kind of what you know is comfortable with me you know he, he says I you know he likes my feedback, I can feel the corners, what I feel, how I feel it so, um, and, and the good news is he can see what I, I feel. So, um, I, you know, like I, I just feel it, it's a good start, you know, in PA and, you know, we'll kind of build a, build a notebook. Like I've always said to everybody, you, your notebook is 80% of things you don't do again and 20% and, you know, of things you do do again. And that's on the, the positive end. So um, I just feel that, you know, we're kind of picking and choosing right now, kind of just putting out, you know, little fires, figuring out what's comfortable. And we'll just kind of take this and, you know, kind of roll forward with it. How much did you need to win at this point? I mean, just uh, getting into this thing, it's been a while since you've been to victory lane. Uh, this has got to help you just from a driver's standpoint. 
Uh, definitely it does. It, it was, you know, it, it's... I, a lot of people know, like I, you know, I don't, I don't do social media. You know, it's, it's done for me just because I, I'm the guy that somebody says something, I, I'll find that guy and you know make sure we <laughs> confront him about it. So, um, I, I just stay off it because there's no reason for it and there's no reason to let you, you know, control what you can control and what other people say you can't control. But um, you still, you still hear the noise. So no matter how much you block it out, you still hear it, and and it is noise. And you know, you just try to take it and you're like yeah well you know they don't know the the in and outs of everything that goes on so um i i feel like this is this is huge for not only myself but i think you know the car owner and, and the sponsors you know because they spend lots of money and this is a business to every person who owns one but it's definitely not a business that makes money so um you have to keep them entertained and you have to keep them wanting more and you know if you're you know things don't go out the way that they kind of expect it they they decide, you know, I, I don't want to do it, and I just, you know, we, we can't lose car owners, and um, I, I don't feel I'm a, you know, a, a tier below driver. I feel like I, I'm just as capable as, as a traveling driver. Um, I just feel things just didn't work out the way, and whether I need that special help to, to work it or, or whatever it is, it's it's just been a tough, whenever you kind of get let go in the middle of the year, it, it, it everybody who does it, it's like it, it takes a year and a half to get back going, because you're just trying to get through and trying to figure out what's your next move, you know, how, how things are going to work. And, you know, I, I feel like when I had this option, I talked to you at, at uh, Putnamville and yeah. I was, you know, not really sure what was going to happen. And, you know, things led down the path of coming here. So um, it's, it's good definitely to, to get a win. And I, I feel like it's, it's a, a morale booster and, and more of a, a, a reassurance that I can still do this. And yep, I'm, you know, not just a mid-pack guy that just goes out there and contends, you know, from 7th to 15th. I, I can contend from 1st to 7th, you know, also. 3rd at the Grove, did way different track than this. Two different, which is not even close yeah. to as far as tracks. Uh, where do you take a two two top threes like that? And where do you go next week? What, what's the plan, obviously? And uh, obviously, again, uh, two, couldn't ask for a better start in yeah. PA. Yeah, uh, going to the Grove, I, you know, I haven't, I think my best finish was seventh. I, I might have got sixth last year at the Outlaws in the 11 car, which, you know, that was my best run ever at the Grove. We, we've had speed, but very inconsistent. So, uh, we, you know, we went there last night or Friday night, and it was, we were fast. You know, yeah, we got the draw. The draw worked in our favor because it, it was narrow, but we could still compete. And we, we did some things that we liked and other things that, I, you know, I really didn't care for. So um, we have a notebook to go back there, but, you know, then it's like, you know, you hear, yet again, you hear the noise of, oh, yeah, it was locked down. It's easy. Well, hey, I'd give anybody who thinks it's easy, let them go down the back stretch of the grove and figure out what you're going to do going into three if you think it's easy. But, yeah, then we come here, and it was – it started out, you know, kind of grippy, and it was like, oh, man, I don't know what's going to happen. And, I mean, it changed in a matter of six or seven laps. I mean, we were moving all around, and it's like – it was definitely ice slick. Like, this is, you know, the BAPS that, you know, I was – used to see and it it's almost like new york dirt it, you can't get a hold of it you're just hanging on hoping to find something so um it, it's it's good that we were able to go from one extreme to the other you know so that way we kind of have you know one you know notebook on both ends of the spectrum and we can kind of you know find something in the middle and make it work where uh, wherever we choose to go